certainly thank God for being here on this evening and for seeing your smiling faces in the place. I to thank God for his mercies and all of the things that he's continued to do in our lives. Uh, this is just uh, another day that the Lord has given us an opportunity to assemble ourselves in his presence. As we get ready for our evening worship service, please uh, join in and uh, allow the Lord to uh, speak to you this evening concerning the things that he has and has in store for you. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, he's the lily of the valley, bright morning star, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, he's the God of every nation, bless his name. How I love him, how I love him. He's the lily of the valley, bright morning star. How I love him, how I love him. He's the God of every nation, bless his name. If you'll stand with me as we go before the Lord in prayer on this evening. Our Father and our God in heaven, Father, we thank you for this another day. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercies, Lord. Lord, you touched us early this morning, Lord, and got us started on another day. Lord, your new mercies, Lord, Lord, that are there with us each and every day, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for them, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you allowed us, Lord, to assemble ourselves before your presence, Lord, on this another day, Lord, that we have set aside to come and to study your word. And Father, I pray today, Lord, that you will open up our hearts, open up our minds, Lord, to receive that which you have prepared for us. God, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, for how you watched out over us, Lord, as we travel back and forth uh, to work and across the highways, Lord. Lord, you protected us, and it was only your hand of protection, Lord, that didn't allow the enemy, Lord, oh God, to bring any hurt or any harm to us, to us, our family. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray today, Lord, that those, Lord, that are in, uh, on their sick beds, Lord, those that are even in hospital rooms, Lord, Lord, that you will stretch out your hand, Lord, and touch their bodies, Lord. Lord, we know that you're able today to raise them up, God. Oh, God, give health and strength to those bodies now in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for them. Lord, look on these, your people, and your people everywhere, Lord. Oh, God, that your blessings and your mercy, Lord. Oh, God, uh, we, we'll, we'll follow us, Lord, all the days of our lives, that you will continue, Lord, to pour out of your spirit upon us, Lord, that we will do the work that you've assigned to our hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, and, Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. Oh, God, send forth your word, Lord, that anointed word that destroys yokes tonight, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we'll give your name the glory, the praise, and the honor for all things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Receive Reverend Ro uh, Robin Josephs as he's, he comes with our scripture. Our scripture reading from this, for this evening can be found in Psalms, the 96th chapter, and it says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great. For the Lord is great. And greatly to be praised. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Amen. As we continue, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This 
is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made.
stretching our hands out looking for anything but God we're lifting our hands just to bless you we want you to be pleased with our offering tonight be pleased with our praise 
God, we want to make you smile tonight. Hallelujah, we give our lives to you, God. We give our praise to you, God. We lift our hearts to you, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, here's my worship. Take joy in it. Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. So I present my heart to you, and I present my life to you. Come on, say, here's my worship. Here's my worship. Take joy in it. Take joy in it. Make it your dwelling place. Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. I want to put a smile on your face. So I present my heart to you. I present my life to you. Here's my worship. Here's my worship.
prayer, Lord. Oh, 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 let me make you smile. Come on, let's sing that to the Lord. Oh, oh. Swear, hallelujah. Oh, oh, let me make you smile. And we sing, oh, oh, let me make you smile. So, Father, we thank thank you that you invite us into your presence we who are not worthy and we who could not come but by the blood of Jesus so tonight Lord see the sacrifice and see the blood on our worship not the sweat from our effort we thank you for your presence your power and your peace today Bless the saints who have gathered tonight and speak powerfully to us that we might grow from the word of God. 
In all things we pray and give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before you take your seat, will you do me a favor? Go to someone you do not know, have not seen. Introduce yourself and welcome them to Worship on Wednesday. To you that are watching us over the World Wide Web through Ustream, we're delighted to have you in the presence of our God. Hallelujah. The presence of our God we worship. Hallelujah. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Than thousands elsewhere. Come on and put your hands together and bless the Lord in this house. Hallelujah. No, will you give him a, an evening Hallelujah. sacrifice? An evening Hallelujah. sacrifice. An evening sacrifice. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, just in your time, just go ahead and sing unto the Lord. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, we praise you, Jesus. We give you glory, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, we bless your name. Hallelujah, we praise your name. You are wonderful, Jesus. Mm. My soul loves you today, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We glory in your presence, Lord. None like you nowhere, Jesus. Ah. We lift up your name and we praise you. Thou art worthy, 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 worthy. Thou art worthy, Lord, and we bless you. Thou art worthy and we praise you. Hallelujah, we lift your name. Hallelujah, we lift your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Awesome God you are. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship your name, Lord Jesus. We worship your name, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Mighty, 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 mighty. Mighty, 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 mighty God, El Elohim, Adonai, we praise you, Yallah Sata, Robo Shetedebas, Hallelujah, 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 we glory in your presence, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are holy and we worship you, Lord Jesus. You are holy and we praise your name. You are holy and we give you glory. Hallelujah. Sandara Bush, 
We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, we worship, we worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Aleluia. Aleluia. Ai, ela vou checar. Yes, Sandra Bacito. Aleluia. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 And he who walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me. I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Will you give God a wonderful praise? You may be seated in the presence of our God. We could do this for the whole duration. I love being in the presence of our Lord. Love to be in the presence of God. And let me help, let me help you with something. If you don't love being in his presence, then you can't appreciate his word. Hallelujah. Please don't ever come looking for the word of God and disrespect the presence of God. One more time. Don't come looking for a word and disrespect God's presence. That's equivalent to somebody coming to your house and they just want something that they came for and they disrespect the fact that they're in your house. They don't compliment your, your, your plaid furniture with the covers, the plastic covers over it. You, you, you know the china closet that's got all of that, the, the old uh, china in it that nobody ever eats off and you just look at it? But at least say that's nice. Don't come in my house and just disregard its ambiance. Because you're looking for something specific. When you come into the presence of the Lord, the Lord says to come before his presence with what? With singing. There, there, there's a way that we have to enter into the presence of God. We come with singing. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord be upon you tonight. To you that are watching us by Ustream, we're delighted that you have logged in and we're excited that we're saved. I said we're excited that we're saved. If for no other reason I'm excited today, it's because I ain't going to hell. I'm going to keep working on this until we get it. Because you can't shout over your car, you can't shout over your job, your health, or nothing else if you don't shout over being saved. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. Had it not been for Jesus, whoo, hallelujah, hallelujah, I'm just glad he saved me. He, he, he overlooked some millionaire, billionaire, Ph.D., so some inventor, some smart person, and he got, he retched down and got me. Woo! And I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it. I said, I'm glad about it. Oh, ain't nobody, I said, I'm glad about it. I'm just glad I'm saved, sanctified, baptized, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Do speak in tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance. I'm saved and it means something. Woo! Hallelujah! 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 The purpose of the church is to exhort the saints to celebrate the salvation that they have received through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is not to excite the saints over prosperity. It is not to motivate the saints into positive thinking. It is not to encourage the saints into 
entrepreneurialism. It is to exhort the saints to bless the Lord their God for salvation through the blood of his cross. Hallelujah. We started this in December. We talked about the cradle and now we're in the cross. We're in the cross form of this series. And uh, we've been walking through the word of God. And um, we, spent, we make no apologies for lingering in his presence. I want to thank God for Pastor Walls and members of the Trinity Church of God in Christ from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Will y'all just all stand up? They're, they're with us this week. And we bless the Lord that... Come on, that's it. Give them a greater community welcome. We said in Cata when we passed out our diagram that we're a local church with regional influence having global impact. And the Lord has blessed us to return from Haiti. And you're going to hear about uh, that trip and some of the things that we discovered and experienced on Sunday. We're just going to have uh, just a report out from team members that went there. But I, I talk about this regional influence and uh, leadership development. This pastor has come with uh, some key members of his church around uh, the music ministry just to get um, trained and to talk through and have impartation on how to flow in worship. And how many of you know we have one of the nation's best worship leaders in the person of evangelist Sharon Jackson? Amen. When you got it, you got it. Amen. Amen. That's it. And I bless the Lord for what the Lord is doing. And it is a great pastor that cares about his congregation to bring members and say, hey, make an impartation. And I, I praise the Lord for your heart. And we're going to hear from him just a little later. The word of the Lord from uh, the epistle of Paul to the church at Galatia or the Galatians. And um, I, I hope that you're reading your faith focus. Is it blessing you? Um, again, we're on the prayer call just this week, the first full week in every month from 7 a.m. to 7.15 uh, Eastern Standard Time. And we would uh, pray, hope that you would join us uh, for that time. We're in noonday prayer on Tuesday. And let me tell you, the saints responded Tuesday. They were here in, in the noonday prayer. And Lord, we went in. Amen. And so we invite you, if you're off, if you're available, to be with us on Friday at noon because that's our fasting days. Amen. Come on, y'all help me. That's our fasting days where we're going to continue the walking out this consecration. The reason why we have to fast and pray so much is because we've been wrong longer than we've been right. Now, that, that, that don't go for some of y'all, because y'all been right ever since you were born. But, but, but for some of us, we've been wrong longer than we've been right. So if you've been wrong longer than you've been right, it takes something to get all that wrong out of you. I'm not talking about that you're doing wrong. I'm talking about you're practicing sin. I'm just saying there's some stuff in us that just ain't right. And, and, and if... The cons if, if our time of fasting and praying in January revealed, to, it takes about 31 days to figure it out. Then it takes another year to work on what you figured out in 31 days. Amen? It takes a minute to give up your right to be right. It takes a minute, come on, to give up your right to look good. It takes a minute to understand that I don't have an identity, but my identity is in Jesus Christ. So watch this, if my identity is in Christ, so is my reputation. So then I have no reputation to defend because I'm in Christ. Too many people are running around trying to make themselves look good when the only thing you have to do is put on Christ. And Christ looks good on you and in you so that you never have to try to be something else. Ain't nobody talking to me. You, you know, if, if, if I suffer with issues of anger, depression, anxiety, and you can be saved and have all of those issues. See, yeah, boy, I need a real church. It, it, those are real issues that people grapple with. So what do you do? You just keep, you keep medicating that 
either through food or through something else? Or do you come and lay that at the altar and say, God, here's a problem. And this is a problem I've had. And this is a problem that's defeated me. This is a problem that has been messing me up all my life. And so I decree in 2014 that that ain't going to be my problem this year. You get what I'm saying? Because if this is the year of God's double-double, 20 and 14, ten, two tens, two sevens, if this is the year of God's double-double, then this is the year of double capacity. This is the year that you get free. This is the year that you have to make room to allow God to once and for all conclude in you that thing that has been tripping you up. This is the year that you just tr that you trust God and not just believe God. Come on, nudge somebody and say you got to trust him, not just believe him. I, I want you to get this, and I'm, I'm going to roll out because this is really the construct of the Apostle Paul's teaching to the church at uh, Galatia. He's saying, listen, your problem is, is that you believe him, but you don't trust him. Can I deal with this for a quick second? It's not just the Apostle Paul talking in this epistle to the church, uh, to the Galatians. That he's talking for us too in this, in this very present time. There's so many of us that believe God. If I ask everybody in this room, do you believe God? Normally, you, and say by a show of hands, who believes God? Just come on, who believes God? Who believes in God? Okay, who trusts God? Good. So all those that trust God, I need you to find all those who ain't trusting them and give us the secret. Let me tell you why I say that. Because we can believe a thing intellectually. We can believe a thing cognitively. We just understand. And we believe that God is. But trusting and believing, although they are interchangeable in terms of etymology, they are absolutely distinctively different in terms of practice. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And watch this, what he says. Now watch what he connects to trusting. And lean not to thine own understanding. Just stop right there. So now you got to go back and ask yourself, since I put you on the spot, about trusting God. Do you trust him the way you understand him? Or do you trust him for what he says about himself? See, if I trust God based upon how I understand him, then I don't trust him. Because the very scripture tells me, lean not to my... Come on, y'all, we're going to walk this thing out tonight. Lean not to my own understanding. So then, Pastor, what, then how do I trust him if the only way I can trust him is by the way I understand him? No. Now you got to get back to believing what he said and trust that what he said is true. Trust what he said about himself is true. And watch this. If I'm going to believe and trust what he says about himself, then I don't have to understand him to trust him. Because if I understand him, then watch, this, watch what Isaiah says. His ways are not my ways, and his thoughts are not my thoughts. So I can't understand God if I try. But, but I trust him. Because I believe what he says about himself. Even when I don't believe what he says about me. Because he tells me that I'm in him and that we're one together. And I can't believe that because I know me. Can I talk to some real folk? When you know you, you're still trying to figure out why the Lord would even pick you to save you because you know you. I ain't talking about the you to come to church. This is y'all's representative. Because this ain't the real you. Oh, see it? Boy. No, no, this is the made up you. This is the phony you, to be honest with you. You phony. Boy, that's hard. That's hard to hear, but I'm, I'm swinging. I got a little strength now. I got a little strength. Watch this. That's, this is the phony us. Because the real us... Don't even smile this much. I do. I smile at home. I'm at home. <laughs> and I laugh. Listen, hold on. Let me help you yourself. I laugh because stuff is funny. And either you are going to be consumed with your life 
and allow the enemy to drain you emotionally, allow him to frustrate you, allow him to so throw you off mentally and physically that you can't gather yourself, then let me help you with something. If that's the case, you're not trusting God. Because if you're reacting to anything other than God's word, then that's what you have trust in. So there's the, there, there's, the, there's the made up us, there's the representative us, and then there's the real us. And so here's what I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you. Paul says to the church of Galatia, and then in the third chapter, and I know we're reading chapter two, but in the third chapter, he starts off by saying, who bewitched you? Where did you go wrong? Who told you to believe the perversion of the gospel that you can start off in the spirit and end up in the flesh? Where'd y'all get that doctrine from? Because that said, that, that clearly didn't come from me. In chapter 2, he's dealing with his autobiography, and he's telling them, because now he's dealing with Peter and the, you know, kind of the fight between Peter and Paul. Yeah, they had a fight. There was a beef. There was a beef because Peter, in Acts chapter 10, had received revelation of the Lord that God made nothing common or unclean. You know that big, he was up on the roof. Y'all, come on, y'all, do y'all know this? He was, Acts chapter 10, he's up on the roof, falls into a sleep, and... Um, God, God had already told Cornelius to send some men to find Peter at Simon the Tanner's house by the sea. You know, remember, God, he get GPS right where he's at. So he, he's up there, um, he's hungry, he falls asleep, and he sees this vision, and he says, rise, Peter, slay, and eat. He says, not me, Lord, because I'm not going to eat nothing that's common or unclean, all right? Now, I want you all to understand, because if you don't understand Acts chapter 10, you can't appreciate Galatians chapter 2. Because Acts chapter 10 gives us the history of Galatians chapter 2 and why Paul went in Peter's face the way he did. Because technically, Peter was supposed to be the apostle to the Gentiles. But he blew it because he wanted to be a bigot and wanted to be a legalist and he wanted to stay in his tradition more than he wanted to trust God's word. Come on, watch this. There's some Peter in all of us. Some of our conditioning... Uh, some of our conditioning is greater than our ability to trust God. I just want to sit in the truth of this. Now, if you, if, you, if you need me to say it another way, raise your hand. Say, put that another way so I understand it. Because I don't want you walking out not understanding. I am saying that Peter was, uh, Peter was um, a, a straight-up Jew. And, and Peter wasn't a racist. Peter was a bigot. Now, y'all can call him whatever you want, but Peter was a straight-up bigot. He had, no, he had no need for Gentiles, didn't believe that he, it wasn't necessary. He was going to be a strict Jew, and that's the way it was. And watch this, even God had to talk to him three times to get his attention. I'm still in Acts chapter 10. He said, on the th- God, now who in the world is God going to really try to talk to to get your attention three times? He calls him three times, and then he finally understands. And then he says no just giving you the text. He says, no. He says, I'm not doing that. I was raised a Jew. I, I, I'm not eating that. God says, don't you dare call what I've made common or unclean, right? He says, he says, there's some people at the door. Go with them. So when he goes with them, he goes to Cornelius' house. Now, the Acts chapter 10 tells you that Cornelius is of the Italian band. He is a non-Jew, which makes him a Gentile, right? But watch this. This Gentile is praying, and he's helping the poor. So much so that his prayers and his gifts come up as a memorial before the Lord. Can you imagine if we gave so much that the Lord saw it and it came up as a memorial? If we prayed so hard that we, you know, our prayers came up to stand before God? So while he was not a Jew, he was devout in understanding, seeking God. But he didn't have the Holy Ghost. Oh, man. That just blew somebody away. What do you mean he had the Holy Ghost? Then how did his pray? Well, you got to have the Holy Ghost. How? No, come on. This is the Holy Ghost began. Because, you know, well, guess what? He didn't have the Holy Ghost. Anybody, anybody want to refute that? The Bible says his prayers and his alms came up, and he didn't have the Holy Ghost. So watch this. He, he then, they go to get Peter. Peter comes and sees this, and then he speaks. And he says in Acts about 1044, I perceive that God is of no respect of person. Because the same Holy Ghost that fell on us has fallen on them. Now watch this. At that point, God had opened the door for Peter to minister to the Gentiles. 
Y'all don't like that. Okay. Jesus was with Peter, and Jesus says to him, hey, launch out into the deep and let your nets down. Right? And he says, uh, no, I'm a professional fisherman. We don't do that in the day. We do that at night. That's why these guys over here washing the nets. I know you don't get it because you're a carpenter and you're a preacher. So you don't know too much, but you don't fish during the day. You wash your nets because we fish at night. So we ain't doing that. Jesus says, if you'll just trust me, just launch out, let the nets down. He says, okay, I'm going to humor you, so I'll let a net down. It is interesting that Peter believed in Jesus, but he didn't trust him. Am I teaching? So, because I want y'all to get this. I want you to get this, some simple things that God is asking you to do, that you believe him, but you don't trust. Because trusting him is obeying him as he has dictated it. Now, our problem is, immediately what happens is your Holy Ghost pride jumps up. Your Holy Ghost pride says, no, 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 I trust the Lord. You can't tell me, Pastor. I've been living, I've been in this way for 40 years. Yep, you've been in the way for 40 years, believing. Right? But watch this. So, so what he says is, he lets a net down, and then the net breaks. But I want you all to get this. He says to Peter in another occasion that the kingdom of heaven is like when I told you to let your nets down. He says, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a fisher who goes to fish, cast his net, and everything is in that net. It ain't just one type of fish, it's all. And of the sheep I have, which are, come on, not of this fold, them also I must bring that there may be, come on, one fold and one shepherd. So he's laying the groundwork that I didn't die, ju I, I came initially for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but because they rejected him, he opened the door of salvation to everyone. Thus we get John 3, 16. For God so, come on, loved the world that he, come on, gave his only begotten son. So y'all see this pattern that God is, is he's looking to save the world, and he gave Peter the opportunity to do it in Acts. Well, now let's fast forward to Galatians, I'm gonna let you go. Fast forward to Galatians chapter two, Paul now starts saying, um, we were okay in Antioch, and Peter was cool until the circumcision group came down. And when the legalists came and said, you can't be saved like that, Peter gets up from the table because he's afraid of them, more willing to hold on to his reputation than to keep his relationship. How many of us are so concerned about our relationship on how others see us than the relationship, I'm sorry, re reputation, how others see us than our relationship that we have with the loss? Particularly in the African American church, and I know I said in the noonday prayer there's no black church, there ain't no Chinese church, I got that, but let me just kind of use this. We're more concerned about how we look than who we're impacting. And I don't know where we got it from because you couldn't have got it from Jesus because in his ministry, he was everywhere. Jesus at the well talking to this woman. Now, if that had been this day, somebody would have took the picture, uploaded it to Facebook, right? Put it on YouTube and said, here's this famous evangelist talking to a woman of the city. Because I need to discredit him, right? Jesus didn't care about his reputation. Because watch this, the disciples, when they rolled up, it was like, hey, who are we talking to? Because the women come in the morning, not in the, who is this? Y'all know, I got Bible for days. Want to hear it? Here it go. Jesus goes to Simon the Pharisee's house. And some woman follows him in. Like she knew him. And she's got this alabaster box. She breaks the box. She, 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 she anoints his feet. Where did he meet her? And then the, then the, then the Pharisee is saying, if he's some kind of prophet, he should know what kind of woman that is. Well, the question is, how you know what kind of woman that is? I'm going 
going somewhere with this. So you can't tell me that we misinterpret the scripture about don't let your good be evil spoken of. You can't tell me that Jesus hangs out with um, Le- Math- uh, I'm sorry, what's his name? The Levite. Who was the tax collector? Oh yeah, Matthew. Matthew, that dude. He hangs out with him. He goes and gets Zacchaeus out of a tree. He hangs out with the woman at the well. Jesus is around some scandalous people. But you so saved, you can't stop to talk to somebody in front of the bar because you worried that some of the saints going to see you at the bar and think you were in the bar instead of you ministering where your reputation is more important than your relationship. Boy, there's some hard amens in here tonight. Because you know what? You're just like Peter. You're holding on. So this is what he says. He says, "Uh, Peter, you are right. Peter's like, no, I'm gone. He said, why are you leaving? Um, Because, you know, some people come. Who? The people that James and um, Cephas sent from the council of Jerusalem. Now, I got to give you this. That's why you got to read the Bible. Acts chapter 15, there's the council of Jerusalem. So they meet and figure out, Lord, what happened? Peter went, and now the Italians, Tony Soprano and them, have received the Holy Ghost. (laughs) Tony Soprano, Paulie, all of them, they got the Holy Ghost. I'm just trying to color the text so you're getting it. They got the Holy Ghost. So now we need to meet to see what we're going to do about Italian speaking in tongues. Paul goes to the meeting and they said, listen, we believe that you've been genuinely called now. So if you go to them, tell them they don't have to carry the Jewish traditions, but they can't eat meat offered to idols. That's our only stipulation. Paul says, cool, I got that. So he goes and starts evangelizing. Peter is with him. Peter's in Antioch hanging out, ministering to them. And watch this. These non-Jews are delighted that Peter, the very icon of the church, who walked on water. You got to know who Peter is. Peter, in their mind, is, whoo, he next to Jesus. And he's sitting down validating that God loves us because he's eating with us. Until. The Judaizers and the legalists and the people that's going to talk about you to make sure you don't make, you ever make bishop. The folk that got your name in their briefcase. So by the time you're ready to get promoted, we're going to pull something out on you. That group comes down. And Peter says, hold on, I got to hold on to my reputation more than the relationship. So he withdraws, and Paul calls him a hypocrite to his face. He says, "Uh uh-uh, no, 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 because that's not what God does. Well, y'all ain't seen Galatians like this, huh? It's, It's an interesting book. That's not what God does. He said he withstood him, called him a hypocrite, called him out said, you, you're not right. And what you're doing is you're hurting the work now. Oh, come on, y'all. He says to the church at Galatia, and he says, um, and I'm going to close with this. In my prayer time, Lord, so I, I sense the Holy Spirit gave me this kind of um, imagery of a little kid holding uh, their parent's hand. And um, you know how kids get where they want to pull away from their parents and they want to walk on their own? They don't want to hold the hand. They just want to, they want to walk. They want to walk with the parent, but they don't want the parent holding their hand. Paul says to the church, how did you get so far out that you took your hand away from God? And just because you were close to him, just because you thought he, because you know he sees you and he hears you and you're walking alongside playing, he says, that's dangerous. Because that's not the relationship God wants with you. There are too many of us that want to be independent from God. We we don't want to hold his hand. We want to walk on our own. We want to tell God, I got this. I can handle this. And I'm here to tell the church tonight, we can't. So wherever you have let God's hand go, 
I'm going to ask you to put your hand back in his hand. Because even though you're walking by yourself and he sees you and you think you're okay, you cannot live independently of God. And, that's, and here's the problem with our church. We're trying to live independently of God. We're trying to mix his pure love, pure grace, pure salvation with our stuff. And says, as long as I'm close to you, I'm still with you. But, you know, I'm not in your hand. There's the challenge. That's the whole challenge with the book of, of Galatians. It's about your flesh versus the spirit. It is about what you want to do as opposed to what God is telling you to do and the freedom that you have. Chapter 3, we're going to get there, but he says you can't provide an all-access pass to anybody because people who are already bound, the only thing bound people can do to you is bind you up. If you're bound, ain't no way you can help anybody get free. Oh, God. So we've got to be free in him. Y'all got this tonight? Chapter 2, he says, um, he says, stay in God's hand. And he says, and be more concerned about the relationship with God than your reputation in the world. If you will take care of your relationship with God, God will handle your reputation. Y'all here? So tonight, I challenge you, as we conclude, I challenge you to not only believe God, but to trust him. So pastor, walk me through this. Here, here it is. This is how you trust God. You simply believe to the point of acting on what he said about himself and what he says about you without your interpretation or opinion or input or understanding. He says, by his stripes, ye were healed, then I'm just trusting that I'm healed. I have no evidence. I'm still in pain, but I trust what he says. I got to trust him when I can't trace him. I got to trust him when I can't really figure. That's what he said. And watch this. And there is no plan B. Are y'all here? That's when we know we're trusting God, when we're not leaning to our, come on, own understanding. When, we're, when we can't explain it, when somebody asks, why are you doing this? And you just, the only thing you can say is, I'm trusting God. I believe what he says about himself. Come on, y'all, get this. And what he says about me. That's why we preach all this time, all this about Daniel and the lion's den, there is somebody who was believing what God said about himself and what God says about him. When we trust God, we are simply going to take him at his word. And here's the great part, and I'm really done. The great part is if you're going to trust God, then you can't worry. If you're going to trust God, you can't worry. Pastor, I'm human. Really? Okay. I get that. No, I get that. But I'm not talking about your humanity. I'm talking about his divinity. And if you're more human than he is divine, then that's why you're worried. When Jesus himself says, take no thought, what ye shall eat and what you shall wear. Is that? For sufficient is the day is the what? The evil thereof. So if you're more human than he is divine, then you're going to live a constant life of anxiety. You're going to worry about what this and worry about that. I'm not talking about throwing away our stewardship, things that we ought to be concerned and taking care of. I'm saying being Dutiful, responsible, and being a good steward is different than worrying about it. I'm going to trust God. This is where I'm at. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm, I shouldn't be teaching this, but 
this is where I'm at. If I'm going to trust you, then I'm going to trust you. And we're going to ride or die together. That's the way this is going to be. Because I, I can't stay up another night worrying about stuff I can't control. I, I can't let nobody else in my head to dance around my mind with their stuff when their stuff doesn't say anything remotely similar to what you told me. I cannot worry that the promise you gave me and the reality that I'm living is not aligned with each other. But I'll do this because I can't dance anymore. I'm tired of being up today, down tomorrow. Happy today, sad tomorrow. Anybody, am I talking to anybody? It is the emotional roller coaster that we go through living this life, wondering whether we're going to make it, wondering whether somebody's going to live or die, wondering whether this one's going to like me, wondering whether this door is going to be, wondering whether I'm going to get this job, wondering whether, forget it. I trust God. I'm in his hand, and whatever God wants from me is going to happen for me, and I'm going to spend my time blessing his name. Come on and praise him in this house. You need to, you need to tell somebody he wants you to leave, live a worried free life. Oh, and it's possible. Come on, I'm in the hands of God. Say it with me. I'm in the hands of God. Come on, decree it over your life. I'm in the hands of God. Sick or well, I belong to him. Rich or poor, I'm thine. Hallelujah. Whether I've got to stand alone or stand in a group, I belong to God. He has my future. He's got my promise. He has my destiny. He has my tomorrow. And I'm going to trust him with his word. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to thine own understanding. And in all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he, come on, can he, he shall direct my path. got to close but minister to three people and tell them stop tripping and start trusting come on and give them a praise in this house You may be seated. To you that are watching us over Ustream, we bless the Lord for you logging on. We, we invite you to our next worship service at 8 a.m. Uh, this coming Sunday as we'll worship the Lord in our morning manna. I'm going to ask you to go simply on your screen. At the bottom portion of your screen, there is the opportunity to sow a seed into this ministry. Simply hit the donate button. It will take you to our website. And we want you to tuck a gift in that will allow us to continue to minister to you wherever you are in the country and the world. It is Greater Community's deep pleasure to extend to you the grace of Jesus Christ and the favor of our God through the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Will you sit a gift and then meet us at our next telecast? God bless you. We're bringing kingdom to community. Say goodnight to everybody.